In this video, I'm gonna show you how I shoot ASMR cooking videos. It's gonna be a very super high level overview and I'm gonna show you all of the inexpensive gear that I use and how I do it. I'll show you how I do it with my camera and then I'll also show you the one cable that you'll need to also be able to pull this off with your phone. So to get absolutely the best audio, you would technically need to soundproof your entire kitchen and home. But if you saw my kitchen tour or my YouTube studio tour video, you'll know that I'm just working in an apartment and I get a lot of noise pollution already from everything going on right outside of my windows. Again, this is just gonna be a super basic breakdown on how I do it with as little setup as necessary in my actual kitchen not like a studio kitchen. Could the audio be better? For sure. And that's why I'm not gonna call this like professional and I'll just call it, dare I say, good enough. And I mean, you heard the video in the beginning of this. I'm just gonna show you how I do that basically. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a camera with a microphone jack input. And if your camera doesn't have this, there is an option that I'll explain in a couple of minutes. Some phones have a microphone jack, and if they don't, like my iPhone, you just need to get a little adapter or one of those little dongles. The next thing you're going to need is a microphone. And I made a whole nother video about this and the ones that I would recommend, and you can check that out. I'll put a link in the description for that. But here I'm gonna be using a Rode VideoMic NTG. I'll put three different options at three different price points in the description, and the cheapest one begins at $40. The next thing that you're gonna need is a microphone stand with an adjustable boom pole or a boom arm. We're gonna use this to get the mic as close to the action as possible. Depending on your microphone, you're also going to need an adapter or a clamp to hold your mic. This can range anywhere between five to $10. Some adapters screw on and then you can either screw your mic on or you will clamp it into a hot shoe. There are some cheap universal options out there that you can just simply clamp your mic into it. I personally love this articulating ball mount adapter that I found because it gives me the flexibility to easily adjust the direction of my microphone. The next thing is going to be a cable that you're gonna have to run from your microphone and then it plugs directly into your camera. The one that I have is 20 foot long, but there is a 10 foot version too that I think is cool if you're not gonna move your camera too far from your microphone. If you're using your phone, you must get this other adapter. It's a special kind of cable that is made specifically to work with mobile devices. If you don't get this, the extension cable won't work by itself. If your phone doesn't come with a headphone jack, like I mentioned earlier, my iPhone, you will need to get one of those little dongles. Now, if your camera doesn't have a mic input, there is another option, but it's a little bit more expensive. And what you'll need is an external recorder. With this, you're gonna run that cable from your microphone into the recorder to capture the audio separately from the video. It's also a little bit more difficult to edit because you're going to have to use software to sync the two together. I'll dive deeper into this in another video because there's a lot of things that you'll need to consider and some challenges that you're gonna face when recording your audio separate from your video. So that's all the tools that you'll need. And next I'm gonna explain how I set this up to capture the audio and I'll give you three tips at the end. So once you have all of the pieces, you need to mount your mic to the stand and then run the cable from your mic into your camera or into the adapters that connects into your phone. When filming your cooking or prepping, you'll want to get the microphone as close to the sound as possible without being in the frame. To do this, I like to position my camera and frame my shot first, and then I'll move my microphone around to get it just out of the frame of the shot. If possible, you want to point the mic straight down. If it's pointing to the side, which in my case is also where the windows to my apartment are, and a lot of the noise that comes from outside, you might also capture that as well. Sometimes that's the only option when I'm shooting an overhead top-down shot though. I have a whole other video about that as well. Another option is to come in from below the camera shooting towards your body. Whenever I'm cooking, I wanna make sure that the microphone is pointed into the pot or into the pan, not over it and not under it. If you, if you take anything away from this, you just wanna get that microphone as close to the action as possible. 
If you're finding value in this video, consider subscribing or joining to become a member of my channel. Members receive special perks and you're helping me create more videos like this. I'll have a link in the description. So on to the tips. My first tip is gonna to be to do an audio test with your camera. Some cameras allow you to adjust the audio settings and I would recommend testing a few different levels till you find one that works for you. Set everything up and then snap your fingers in front of the microphone and then you'll see the mic levels jump and then that's where you can make your adjustments to your camera settings so that your audio doesn't peak or blow out. The way that I did it is my camera, it kind of has increments going from you know zero to like 30 and I started at you know 25 and I'll hit record on my camera and the first thing I'll say is the camera's recording at volume level 25 and then I'll snap my fingers, then I'll cut the clip, then I'll adjust it down to 20 and I'll hit record and I'll say the camera's recording at level 20, snap my fingers and do some tests, then I'll cut the clip and I'll do the same thing and go down in little five uh, number increments down to like five and then that way, when I go back to listen to the audio on my computer or with some headphones on, I can know, okay, this was recording at level 25. This is what it sounds like. This is how, you know, if there's any hiss or, you know, audio or, or if I can hear other noises, I know that, oh, I don't wanna go with that one. And then after you kind of fine tune it and you figure out what levels work best for you, I pretty much just lock down, um, you know, what works for me. And I just stuck with that and I haven't had to make any adjustments uh, since then. So if you wanted to be lazy, you could do auto audio levels. But the problem with that is the way auto works is that when it's quiet, the gain of your camera will kind of like turn up the volume searching for audio. The downside to that is let's say you want to get a shot of you like searing a steak. Once you point your mic at the hot pan, if it's completely dead silent, your gain is going to really like pick up because it's searching for audio. Once that steak hits the pan and that sizzle starts, that sizzle is gonna be blown out. And then your audio is gonna like freak out and compensate for it and bring it down. And it's basically gonna kill the shot because the very beginning is when you want to hit that sizzle when it drops, right? So having auto audio levels isn't necessarily gonna be your best option to capture a great audio. Unfortunately, with a phone, you don't have too much options when it comes to adjusting your audio. However, there are apps that you can download that unlock these features. And I have a whole nother video about the apps that I would recommend when filming cooking content with your phone. I'll put a link in the description. So tip number two is that the tighter that you can frame your shot, the closer you can get your microphone to the action. So if you zoom in on whatever you're doing or if you bring your camera closer to the action, it can fill most of the frame of the shot with your food and that means you can get your microphone closer without it being in the shot. You know, if you ran like a wide shot where you can see the whole entire prep table and your whole entire body, you're not gonna be able to get that microphone very close because it's such a wide shot. With the iPhone, I like to zoom in with the 2x zoom option. This is kind of like their 50 millimeter lens on the iPhone. I like using the two times zoom because it's kind of like portrait mode. And I think it gives the shot a different feel compared to running a wide angle lens or camera on the phone and just bringing your phone closer. And tip number three is that this setup also works great for capturing your audio when you're just talking to the camera. I'm actually doing that right now with the same exact setup. Just get the mic as close to your mouth as possible without it being in your shot. This is honestly one of the main reasons that I would recommend investing in a shotgun microphone first because you can not only capture great cooking sounds, but you can also use it for all of your talking stuff as well. And with that being said, you know, capturing great audio is the first step in taking your cooking content to the next level and knowing how to edit that is going to make it much better. I'm creating a full course on how to plan, shoot, and edit professional looking cooking videos. Depending on when you watch this, it may be out, or you can sign up on the email list to get notified once it's ready. I'll put a link in the description. Also check out my Facebook group, YouTube Cooking Creators. We discuss a lot of these topics in there. Just make sure that you say yes to the three questions and agree to the rules or your request to join will get denied. And with that being said, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Aloha.